I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a quote. Get the right around in two hours. I'll be You'll come by dead line. How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand I should have our lawyers do it. I think you should serve on a jury. Mr. Hume, with all the responsibilities Is it I have. Is really a matter of your responsibilities? Or that it's just a pain in the neck? Now, look, look, look. I, I used to avoid it, too. And then one day, Marion said, if you and all the people who should be serving on juries keep ducking out on it, what kind of juries will we be left with? Twelve people who have nothing better to do. So I went. And you know... I think I really got a lot out of it. Mr. Hume, I think you should know that I am bitterly disappointed in your attitude. I'd hope that you'd support my wanting to duck this. Sorry. Come on, Donovan. I gotta get somebody. Don't you think you owe me? You've never done anything for me in your life. I will. Rossi, I'd love to have you behold them to me, but the fact of the matter is, I just can't do it tonight. Can't do what? Ah, it's my journalism class. Why are you taking a class? I'm not. I'm teaching one. Uh, Lou, listen. You could really help me out here. See, I'm supposed to deliver two guest speakers, and there's only two weeks left in the course, and I haven't come up with anybody yet. How about it? How about what? Helping me out. Don't you think you owe me? Yes, I do. More than I can ever repay. What time do you want me? Are you kidding? You putting me on? I'd love to do it. I'd love to slip into my tweed jacket with the leather patches and get out my pipe and spend the evening discussing the history of journalism with a bunch of impressionable co-eds. Let me have your wallet, keys, comb, or any other metal or sharp objects you might be carrying. Rossi, 
Do you ever feel a little apprehensive about going in here? What do you think? They might take us hostage or something? It occurred to me. Well, don't worry, Lou. The state has a no hostage policy. Oh, good. What does that mean? Did the prisoners all agree they'll never take anybody hostage? No, but if they ever did, the state will let the hostages die before giving in to any of their demands. And see, the prisoners all know that. Oh, good. Clear on 7,000? 7,000. Everybody will pass their assignments from last week up to the front. We'll get started. Anybody have any problems? Yeah. I had trouble getting out to do the research. <laughs> Anybody seen Morley? Okay, uh, I know we were supposed to cover interviewing techniques tonight, but instead we've got something better. We're very fortunate to have my city editor from the Los Angeles Tribune here tonight, so you can try out your interviewing techniques on him. Lou Grant. Lou? Thanks, Rossi. Uh, I didn't really prepare a lecture. I just thought I'd uh, tell you a little about my job as a newspaper man. Is there something specific that you'd like to ask me? Well, Feel free to jump in if you have any questions or if there's something you'd like to say. My first experience with newspapers was throwing them from my bike at four in the morning when the snow was up to here. I knew then I had to get a job indoors. All right. My job as city editor is more than assigning reporters. I set the tone of the coverage. Let me give you an example. Say there was a change of administration here. How would you cover it? Who would you talk to first? OK. Uh, let me ask the guy who would have to make that decision. Which one of you is the editor? Editor? Man, we need an editor around here like we need a travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. You don't need no editor if you don't got no paper. Mr. Grant, I was the one that set up that newspaper. So why'd you shut it down? Is that what they told you? I set up the guidelines for that paper. They decided they couldn't live with that, and they walked out. What good's a journalism class without a newspaper? Wait a minute, Mr. Grant. I can tell by the way you're just standing there, you're about ready to tell me how to run my prison. You see these books? They're about the history, the theory, and the practice of running prisons. They don't have the answers. I've been working in prisons for 16 years, and I don't have the answer. Now, you have been in prison one half hour. OK, Mr. Grant, what's the answer? It just seems to me that when you've got a program like this journalism class, you should follow through on it. Don't you frustrate the prisoners by not giving them an outlet? I mean, how are you going to rehabilitate these guys? This facility is not for rehabilitation. I don't understand. I figured as much. California has a very large penal system certain facilities, there are rehabilitation programs. Not here. San Isidro exists for punishment. The men in here are not first-time offenders. So you just write them off? You're going to be tough? 
Can I give you some background? Sure. I got my master's in criminal justice in 63. I worked for a couple of years on the government's commission on uh, penal systems. When I had a chance to put my theories into practice here, I grabbed it. You see, Mr. Grant, I knew that the old way of running things was wrong. It was arbitrary and cruel. I came in and recognized that inmates had rights. I wiped out the system of favoritism. Sounds like a good beginning. Yeah. It was, for a while. And then all hell broke loose. You see, the 60s didn't just happen outside prison, Mr. Grant. They happened in here, too. Blacks became more militant. Violence increased. There was chaos. I ended up having to inflict punishments harsher than the old-style wardens just to reestablish order. Well, now, the pendulum has swung back. These are calmer times. Maybe now's the right time to start up a newspaper. You could be right. Times have changed. <sighs> but anyway, Mr. Rossi's class ends in two weeks. I don't have someone else to come in here and get a newspaper started. Now, wait a minute. That isn't what I came here for. Feel free to borrow as many of these books as you need. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A and E. Miss Pinchot, I knew that name was familiar. This is an honor. You run a very fine newspaper. Thank you. Did your newspaper publish any articles about the defendant in this case? Yes, we did. Did you personally receive any information about the defendant or his alleged crime that was not published? No, I did not. But you did read the articles? I try to keep abreast of everything we publish. I see. So it's fair to characterize you as an exceptionally well-informed individual? I feel it's my obligation. Mrs. Pinchon, I imagine that in the course of running a major newspaper like the Los Angeles Tribune, you must have an awful lot of very important decisions to make every day. Is that correct? Yes, that is true. And you make them quickly and definitively? Certainly. Then, Mrs. Pinchon, I have to believe you have already formed an opinion in this case. Your Honor, I would like to... Excuse me. I have not formed an opinion about this case, and I don't think I should be rejected on the basis of being well-informed and decisive. On the contrary, I think my concern with events in this city should make me the kind of a person that you would want to have serve on a jury. I think this is an area where we can make some progress. We just have to check on the wording in the old contract. Arnie, as your legal counsel, I've got to tell you that the language in that contract is inadequate. It violates Article 6 of the Basic Agreement. Article 6 is irrelevant at this point. We have a court ruling on that. And we'll hold off on that for a second. I'm moving on now to subparagraph B. Arnie, that's an area that we're not prepared to get into at this time. Well, did you get our memorandum on that? We're studying it. We have a problem with Section 7. Just don't forget that those terms are superseded and replaced by the conditions prescribed in the preamble. Gentlemen, isn't it time for our lunch break? Well, well Charlie, it, it's only 10.15. Well, and I'd like to propose that you guys talk this out over coffee. I want to go over some things with Mr. Lucas. It's against our policy to discuss substantive issues without benefit of legal counsel. If Mr. Hume promises to keep his hands in his pockets, I uh, won't be afraid to be alone with him. Charlie, it's a very sticky legal question. Now, it could get into litigation. If it does, you'll have a walkout on your hands. Listen, if, uh, if, if you don't hear from us in an hour, call a guard and break in. Uh, Jesse David Dillard, illegal entry, armed robbery, 15 years. And he's assigned to an exclusive interview with the prison cook. What would you have him write, Lou? How I spent my summer vacation? Mm -hmm. Hector Sandoval, Grand Theft Auto, assault on an officer, possession of heroin. 15 years, and he's doing methods of squash cultivation. Leroy Michael Vallow, murder, life sentence. Don't you find discipline in the classroom a problem, Lou? 
Oh, these guys are so happy to have a diversion. They'd sit there quietly for a half hour if I came in and did a tap dance. I'd sit quietly for an hour to watch you tap dance. You're a nice guy, Lou. Going out to that prison, giving your time to help those guys out? Nah, nah, I'm just going out there to help them get started. Why single me out? Rossi's been doing it for weeks. Billy. Okay, Rossi's being very nice. But it'd be so hard for you to go over and say that's a nice thing for you to do, Rossi. Yes. So they've already assigned you to a case, huh? Armed robbery and assault. But I had to talk my way onto the jury. I gave my time to come down here. They wanted to boot me because I was too well informed. Mr. Hume, have you been able to make any headway at all negotiating with the pressman? Yeah, except for a couple of details to be worked out. I think we've settled the basic points. What's your secret? Keeping me out of the way? No, in this case, I think it was keeping the lawyers out of it. Oh, can you do that? Well, it looked like Lucas really wanted to talk. Listen, Mrs. Pinchot, we really miss you. Sounds like it. Mr. Hume, well done. Okay, you got a newspaper. Now, what are you going to put in it? Right now, if you use your best story as the lead, your banner headline is going to say, Squash, the versatile vegetable. Maybe you could talk about how the Tribune forms its editorial policy. Well, okay. Um, after you take away the wire services and the other bureaus, we apply the same test you do. The basic test of whether something is newsworthy is, does it affect our readers? Like right now, what we want to know is what's happening at San Ysidro prison that affects you. Man. You think the warden's gonna let us tell what's really going on behind these walls? <laughs> Let's talk about that. I'd like this to be a discussion. No, man, I'm sorry I interrupted. You go ahead with your lecture. Hey, come on. What about the rest of you? Let's have a little give and take. I never met a writer yet who wouldn't rather talk than write. I'll be back. That guard is there for your protection. I don't need any protection. When you're on these grounds, you're my responsibility. Look, those guys are sitting there like zombies. I waive your responsibility, OK? I'll even put it in writing. Now, that is not the point. Huh? I'll see what I can do. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. So what's the catch? The catch is that you guys are running out of excuses for not opening up. You got yourselves a newspaper and you got it on your own terms. You mean Big Ben's gone for the whole class? Right. So what's on your mind? Hey, man, can you call my old lady? My brother owes heaven money. Hey, man, why don't you cop us some grand? Hold it, you guys. No way. Hey, wait a minute. Can't you just flip the letter in the box for me? Oh, come on. Lighten up, will you? We're not here to run errands for you guys. You know, I thought you were cool. Oh. Are we going to work tonight or not? OK. So we got ourselves a newspaper. Now, how heavy is the warden going to sit on it? Well, we'll have to work under his guidelines. Yeah, you can forget it, because the warden don't want nobody to hear the truth. Oh, man, Jiddy's right, you know? I mean, the man has his own version of the truth. And I tell you, it's nothing like what's really going down in this hall. Your version ain't what's going down either. Oh, man, don't start singing that same old song. It ain't no song. Everyone knows that the blacks run the prisons, and the whites ain't got nothing to say. Hey, man, you know, you speak for your own mouth, OK? I mean, these guys, they don't run my life in this joint. Ain't that right, Roy? Hey, come on, guys. I think things are getting a little out of hand. All it, Rosie. This sure beats the hell out of the versatile vegetable. What can you say? You know, you just, uh, I mean, you, you just don't feel like you're ever going to get caught, you know? Uh, I mean, well, you just don't. It's, uh... Man, anybody tells you that they didn't do what they got them in here for is a liar. Because if they didn't do that thing, then they did something before that they got away with. How do you feel about being in prison? 
I ain't that crazy about it. Come on, be straight. All right, man, punish me for what I did. Put me in jail, take away my freedom, but don't force me to join a gang to survive. Get a knife stuck at me in the child line. Have to fight off guys trying to rape me. The bottom line, it ain't safe here. Now, if we write that, you gonna get it printed? I was down at the courthouse looking for Councilman Garber's divorce here. I hear his wife has some eight by ten glossies. Donovan, she's in the middle of an amusing, innocent anecdote. I'm sorry. I heard they were color slides. Anyhow, we run smack into Mrs. Pinchon. Oh, my God. Don't tell me that she's Mrs. Garber's mystery witness. She's on jury duty. I think we picked the wrong person to tell this to. Can we come in if we promise not to chew too loud? Yeah, sure. Come on. Billy was this morning. Well, I didn't see the assignment sheet. I'll get to it this afternoon. Hmm. The only way to get Lou to read what you wrote these days is to knock off a liquor store. Those are the assignments from your class? Any potential competition there? Some are not that bad, and some are really bad. So we'll pull them into shape. I hope you and Rossi don't forget where you got your start. Don't worry. The trip will get a lot out of this. I have Rossi doing an interview with one of the prisoners that I think will turn out to be something really special. Oh, good. Something for the convict's corner. <laughs> What's uh, the most difficult adjustment you've had to make? <laughs> I hear there's a work program that's pretty good here. Do you feel enough is being offered in that area? What do you think? It's OK. That's this. It's good stuff. A couple of weeks, I could have enough for a paragraph. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. If you want to get someone to talk a lot in here, you've got to get someone who's just arrived. Why's that? Most guys, when they first get here, the uh, first thing they do is talk a lot, you know, chatter. They try to talk themselves into believing that this ain't tearing them up inside. Then what? Settle down. You learn that if you want to stay alive in prison, you got to listen. Who do you open up to? Nobody. There are a few guys that ain't bad. They fight the same thing. Don't you have to talk to somebody? I got a wife. My mom's still alive. If something happens I want to talk about, I'll talk to them in my head. I share everything with them in my head. And you get to see them on visiting days? Man, that's the worst. Why was that the worst? When they come, I can't say nothing. I got so much to say that I choke on it. And look, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I know this is terrible, but I'm just not with it today. I got other things on my mind. What's that? You know that guy, Chris Parsons? The white dude in our class? Sure, sure, yeah. They found him hanging by his neck in his cell this morning. Killed himself. But what I'm trying to tell you is this place can really mess a person up. <laughs> Hey, you know, I've just, I've just been reading Rossi's prison piece. What do you think? Well, the last thing I ever expected was to find myself feeling sympathy for the guy. Well, kind of sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Yeah. This J.D. is one of the more articulate guys down there. You think he's a real bright person? No, I think so. I think he might have something going for him when he gets out. What'll that be? Well, he served three out of 15 years for armed robbery and assault. He'll be eligible for release in two more years. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Just a second, please. Lou, I think you may want to take this. Who is it? Mr. Tucker. He's very upset about Rossi's article. Why? J.D.'s up there on assault. Yeah? Mr. Tucker was the victim. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Lou Grant. Mr. Tucker, I'm sorry if the article stirred up any bad memories for you. They're not memories. 
this day-to-day -day reality. Three years have gone by, and it seemed like it happened yesterday. The Tribune did not intend to cause you any further pain. Oh, I shouldn't have been surprised by that victim of a crime is always an insignificant detail. Would you tell me what Jesse Dillard did to you? He was right there with the gun, standing. My wife was hysterical. I could hear her trying to breathe. He was standing right there with the gun pointed right at me. It's one of those cheap kind, you know? The kind that you never know what a damn thing's gonna hit. He wasn't convicted of assault with intent to kill. Look, I don't give a damn what he was convicted of. Now, you let him talk. Why don't you be quiet and let me talk? Look, I want to tell you what he did to my life. I'm not talking about the radio, the television, or the stereo, or the money that he took. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about shaking so bad that I can't get in my car to drive to work. I'm talking about taking pills at night to go to sleep, keeping a handgun on my pillow, turning my home into a fortress. I'm talking about a feeling that I haven't been able to shake. A feeling that I was a coward that night, that my wife thought so too. Have you been able to talk to her about this? We're not together anymore. Mr. Tucker, I am so sorry. I know people are going to read that article and they're going to be thinking, what's a guy like that doing behind bars? Well, I can tell them. I know this isn't any consolation, but Jesse Dillard did receive a very stiff sentence, and he's serving it in a maximum security prison. I know that. And I know I'm out of line by blaming you. And I'm sorry. But he's going to serve his time, right? Three, five years, or whatever. He's going to pay his dues, right? That's right. And it's going to be all over for him. But it's not quite over for me yet. And it may never be. See, Miss Newman, you can shorten the prisoner's sentence, but not the victim's. Are you going to tell Charlie about it? I don't know. He looks kind of busy. <laughs> uh, may I have a minute of your time? Better be important. I'm in the middle of a cheese dance. <laughs> what would you say? I told you that we could get Leo Shiro to work here at the Tribune. I'd say the Post must have folded. Why else would they let him go? It's the other way around. He's not happy there. He feels cut off from access to the top people. He'd like a little more autonomy and somebody to say nice job leave once or twice a week. I could take Monday and Wednesday. <laughs> well, the Times is going to make him an offer, so I think you better make a move on it. How do you know all that? The lady that I've been seeing is a good friend of Lee's wife. Hmm. Normally, this would have to go through Mrs. Pinchon. Well, when are you going to be speaking to her next? Not for nearly three hours, by which time Lee will probably be slipping into his New York Times sweatshirt. Is it going to be expensive? Can we afford not to find out? Lee! Lee, this is Charlie Hume. Y yeah. Oh, fine. No, no, I'm in L.A. Hey, listen, let me get to the point. I hear by the grapevine that you're not happy at the Post. It is. How would you like to come work for the Tribune? Oh, really? How much did the Times offer you? Boy, they're rich. Well, we can't quite match that. I mean, maybe, you know, we... Might be able to come close, but we can't offer you that much. However, what we can offer you is a little more autonomy, a chance to work with a fine staff, and a working environment with direct access to the top people. People who wouldn't be above saying, nice job, Lee, once or twice a week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a hell of a lot of fun, Lucy. What did I do? I just had to take the heat for you from a guy who was brutalized by one of your convicts. They're not my convicts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've read your piece. I've heard you talk about your class. So I already know that all prisoners are just sensitive human beings mistreated by the system. 
Meanwhile, the people of this city are afraid to walk the streets at night. Jeez, Rossi. Hold it. I don't feel any safer in this city than anybody else, all right? I've seen people right after they've been mugged, mugged for the change in their pockets. I've seen what people look like after shootings. I've been there when the bodies came up. I don't appreciate being branded as someone who is unsympathetic to the victims of crimes just because of my work in prisons. I don't think depriving these guys of a few basic rights makes our streets any safer. I'm gonna write my story. You can't run this, guys. Not the way it is. The warden won't let. Uh-uh. We won't let. Where we? Where? Oh. Everything in there is the truth, man. You think it's the truth? You calling me a liar? No, no. And every word in there may prove to be true, and probably is. But we can't print it. Not in the edition that's coming out tomorrow. Hey, man, what kind of job fuck are you giving us? Look, this is a hell of a good job of investigating. There's a, there's a lot of stuff in here that's dynamite. There's a lot of stuff that's opinion. That's the stuff that's got to come out. That's your opinion. What you're saying is that Chris Parsons was murdered, that his suicide was a phony, and that one of the prison gangs is responsible. We're saying that because it's true. How do you know? Cause I know. All right, tell me what you know. All right. And leave out that he feels, I... he thinks, and he hurts. Okay. Now let's look at the facts that we do have that can be confirmed by another source or by physical evidence, because that's the stuff that we can. Chris was murdered. You can't say that. Well, he did, ain't he? Can't we say that? Yes. But if you're going to say he was murdered, you got to be able to prove it. He was murdered. Man, we got the interview from the doctor over there. OK. OK, let's start piecing this together. Now, Chris was working in the infirmary. And bringing out pills for the gang. And we know there was an unexplained pill shortage. How do we know? Because I got a statement right there from the doctor saying that was so. All right. That's a fact. Hey! Hey, hey, another thing, you know, everyone knows that that gang controls the pill traffic in this joint. Because we've all bought pills from them. Is anyone willing to testify to that? I will. Okay. What else do we know? Four guys saw Chris asleep about 15 minutes before he supposed to hung himself. Yeah, and at the time that Chris died, four gang members were not in the place that they were supposed to be. And I got two guys that are swear to that. It doesn't make anyone a murderer. Now, Chris was gonna blow the whistle on that gang, see, so they killed him. And that's the way it went down. C come on, J.D., you can't make those accusations. You're not a prosecutor, you're not a judge, and besides, you can't prove it. So what are we going to do? What you do is lay out a series of events, a series of facts that point to Chris's alleged participation in pill trafficking with the gang that allegedly controls the pill traffic here. When you get that, we'll take a look at it. Maybe we'll have something we can print. Has anything important happened that I should know about? Important? Well, um... Headline is up about 2% this week. Uh, suburban edition was a half an hour late because of traffic. I already told you that I settled with the pressman. And oh yeah, I hired a Pulitzer Prize winning Lee Oshiro away from the post. You say the uh, suburban edition was half an hour late. Mrs. Pinchon. Mr. Hume, you're wonderful. Tell me all about Oshiro. Those guys showed a lot of initiative, Ross. That'd be a hell of a story outside the prison. Yeah, sure, but there's no way the warden's going to print it. Well, let's see what they get. If it sounds journalistically, I'll take it up with Joplin. Oh, it was really touch and go there for a while. Did you feel it? Huh? 
There were times when I was missing a guard, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, the first edition comes out tomorrow. Congratulations. Buy an orange soda. Why not? You're driving. What do you think, man? I don't know. Those dudes took a lot of the fire out of the story, you know. Yeah, but they left a lot of fire in it, too. <laughs> Not a good that's gonna do us. No one's ever gonna read it. Paper's coming out tomorrow with the same old stuff. Not exactly. What do you mean? Look, I'm the editor of this newspaper, right? Then I say what goes in it, right? So I sent the story on down to the print shop. <sighs> Hey, what are you saying, man? Are you telling me that we're going to print that? Look, it's the truth. Every word in that story is absolutely true. Hey, yeah, man, I know it's the truth. But there's going to be some trouble. Maybe not. Hey, man, that ain't exactly no interview with the prison cook, you know. I know that. And people are going to respond to that, you know. I know that. Then there's going to be some trouble, ain't there? We'll continue in a moment here on a and &E. Okay, Walter, you've got a deal. At work at a quarter to nine, Charlie? What'd you do, sleep at the paper last night? Have you heard about the possibility of a paper shortage? No, is there going to be a paper shortage? It looks that way. I don't see where that's cause for dancing in the halls. Unless... Unless... Our managing editor just got off the phone with a paper distributor in Canada. Who is going to deliver a stockpile to our Orange County warehouse by the end of next week? A three months supply. Nice, Charlie. I was in the criminal courts building and I thought I'd look in on a trial. The public defender was making her final argument. Imagine what it's like trying to plead your case with Mrs. Pinchon sitting there on the jury. I don't know, I have to imagine. Okay, I think the lead's a lot tighter now. Yeah, good. Is that it? That's it. Nice to have you back at the trip. I told you I was only going out there to help the prisoners get their papers started. First edition came out this morning. Hmm. So even as we speak, a kid on a bike is riding up and down the aisles, tossing papers into the cells, huh? <laughs> Lou, I just got off the phone with San Ysidro. How are we selling? Lou, they pulled the paper. Why? I don't know. Something about an inflammatory story and a fight in the prison yard. Six guys are in the infirmary. The warden has the prison on riot alert, and the paper shut down. Damn. Handle things for a while. Charlie, things took kind of a bad turn out at San Isidro this morning. Oh? There was a fight in the prison yard. It has to do with the newspaper, shutting it down. It's too bad. What happened? I don't know. It's hard to tell from here. I want to go out there. You've been going out there. I don't mean after work. I mean now. I might be able to get back for the budget meeting. And you might not. Donovan can cover it for me. Well, that's very nice. But Donovan has been covering for you. A lot. I'm sorry if I've been distracted. Look, Charlie, I've developed a rapport with some of the guys. They've started to trust me a little since I got the paper for them. Now they may be losing it, and I feel responsible. Lou, well, you know as well as I do, you can't be city editor of the L.A. Tribune and the San Isidro Bulletin. I think we're at the point where you're going to have to choose. Charlie, I'm a part of what's happening out there at that prison today. Let me choose tomorrow. I didn't just shut the newspaper down. I shut everything down. The programs, the shops, something like this happens. And every little bit of progress we've got going comes to a complete stop. What happened exactly? 
Word that the bulletin was printing a story on Chris Parsons' death hit the grapevine. Wait a minute, I didn't okay that story. You didn't? No. Well, here it is. An hour after breakfast in between Sallyport 4 and the exercise yard, members of the black prison gang attacked the leader of the Mexican gang. Now my prison's on riot alert. In other words, the story got around without the newspaper. Right. So the story was going to spread anyway, right? I don't think you can blame the guys on a paper for that. No, no. But they were irresponsible enough to print that story. Now, how can I believe that they can handle a prison newspaper? Oh, listen. There's no way those prisoners are ever going to release a story you don't want them to. It was dumb of them to even try. This is a good story. I'd be proud to run the story in my paper. It's no good, Lou. If I give them back the paper, then I am stuck with a potential confrontation every week when it comes out. I think you have a potential safety valve here. Maybe if you had it this time, it would have stopped those rumors. You don't know that. No, I... Just suggesting what's possible. You know better than I do. I'm glad you give me a little credit for knowing my own prison. Hey, I give you a lot of credit for knowing your own prison. What do you think? It's possible. Then does the newspaper deserve another chance? Well, Mrs. Pinchon, when were you sprung? Just now. It's so long since I've seen a newspaper, all I want to do is catch up. How did the deliberation go? It was terrible. Why, well, you, you think maybe you made the wrong decision? We made the right decision. We found that young man, James Clark, guilty. Ah. Uh. I'm afraid I find mercy easier to dispense than justice. Still, I'm glad you encouraged me to go. Well, how are things here? As a matter of fact, I authorized a fairly big paper purchase. I would have held off, but the price was irresistible. You bought a paper? No. I bought paper, newsprint, at $10 a ton less than we've been paying. Do we need paper? Aren't we due for three months' worth in a couple of weeks? If there's a lumberman strike. What lumberman strike? Walter LeClaire had an inside track on some information. Walter LeClaire. Whenever there is discontent in the lumber industry, Walter's on the phone with news of a strike. Well, there might be a strike. And it was such a good deal. How much? Three thirty-five a ton. And um, if there is no strike? If there is no strike, we have 67,000 extra tons of newsprint. I hope you have a big garage. If you were working for me on the outside, I'd fire you for that. I don't care, man. Send us home. Hey, man, leave the man alone. I blew it. You blew it big, J.D. I didn't even know if Goffman was going to let us run anything. I think he was. He's an interesting guy. Might be worth an interview next issue. Next issue? We got a paper? You got a paper. All right! All right! Hey. Uh, listen, um, this is my last session with you. I'm sorry. There's no way I can come up here anymore without it interfering with my work at the Trib. Maybe Ross will be back next week. I'm sorry. Same old song. Bye-bye, baby. Hey, what you, what you want, Jack, huh? You want somebody's promise? You want a five-year, 50,000-mile warranty? Now look, we got one more issue. We got one more chance to get a real story past the warden. I don't know about you guys, but as far as I'm concerned, it's Christmas, and this dude just came down the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> and before I die of happiness, I just have one problem. What are we going to put in this rag? Anybody got any ideas? Well, you know, uh, somebody's they're cutting off the cookie supply. You know, we don't get half of what the monthly alumni is. How about that? The guys in C Block ain't had hot water in their showers for over two weeks now. What do you think, Lou? Is it cookies or cold showers? 
It's your paper. Till it turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> Good luck, fellas. Keep me on a subscription list. You got it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I don't know about you, but I'd like to talk about contact business. Oh, That's right. All right. All right. All right. I want to do this. We need to start with some substance. puts fond memories of his wife aside to search for a missing girl on the a &E mystery movie tonight. Now, it's a tough SWAT team, but will a rookie cop muster the courage to kill? Chan Michael Vincent stars in Police Story, next on A&E.